Now, first off, can we just all give Phil a really big hello, Phil? Hello, Phil. Hello, Phil. Hello, Phil. Hey, Phil. Hello, Phil. We are so happy to have you back. Oh my gosh. You're probably the only person that can get all of us to get together on a Saturday at noon. I just need you to know that. So this is very exciting. So Phil, I'm going to let you just talk a little bit about what you've been up to, what you're doing now, and what you have coming up before we start our workup. Hi, Phil. Hey, guys. Hey, great That's to be nice. here with you guys. Um, I think, like you said, it's been since November. Um, I've seen you guys, obviously, you sent me that great video, um, wishing me luck for the race I had in Daytona earlier in the year, which was great. Um, definitely love the inspiration. Unfortunately, the race didn't go so well, um, but it's not part of my normal championship, so it doesn't really matter. Um, what but yeah, what happened? Uh, we just weren't competitive enough. We didn't have a good enough driver lineup, crew. Everything just kind of was not quite up to par. But we're going to be strong, hopefully, this year in the World Championship and in the European Championship, which is where most of the efforts from the team and from me are going. Um, and that all starts in March, actually, in America. The first round is in, in a, a track called Sebring in Florida. Sorry, can you hear that phone? Okay. Right, I might <laughs> just <time. laughs> While Phil's answering his phone, I just want to talk about how he did not have the best race, they said, right? And then yeah. he just gave up and he's not racing anymore. Is that what he said? No. No, no he didn't. He said they're just going to do better next time. And I think that's really good for us to hear is that we're not always going to have our best race, right? And so we just keep working hard and we keep going, which is what Phil's doing. So that's really awesome. That's really good inspiration. Yep, that's okay, right. Phil, go ahead. Take it away. Yeah, so uh, my, my chairman it really kicks off in March and then we're going from March to November all across the world we're going to be racing in America like the first round um, and then back in Europe and back across to all we're across in Europe, Belgium, Spain, Italy. Um, where in America are you going to be racing Phil? Where where? Where in America are you going to be racing Phil? Florida in a place called Sebring. Um, so it all starts there and so my training is kind of coming to a close now um, with my first race being four weeks away so I'm just starting to ramp up my cardio, do other things, um, and make sure I've addressed any issues that I have. It's kind of getting a bit late now because um, the race is about to get going, but also making sure I'm in a good mental headspace because 50% of it is um, the physical preparation and the other half is, is making sure I'm in the best mental state of mind. Um, really hungry to get back my world championship title after it didn't go so well last year. And, uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty pumped for this one. But yeah. That's awesome, Phil. You know, we are always, always, always rooting for you. Your biggest fans are coming from Team Achilles Kids, and we are just so excited to have you back. Okay, let's get in it. Are we ready? Yeah. Everybody yeah. ready? Okay. Yeah. So, Phil, are we starting party. standing or are we on the ground? We're going to start sitting this time. Every time we started, we pretty much started with a hamstring stretch, but today is going to be slightly different. It's a hamstring stretch nonetheless, but we're going to sit down on the ground like I am. And we're going to have one leg bent to the side like this. Doesn't matter which one you use at the start. And then the leg in front of us. Like, like, we're going to keep that leg as straight as possible. Just rest and relax it. And we want to try and reach for our toe with both hands, allowing our body to kind of collapse in front. If you can't reach your toe, that's fine. Just reach as far as you can. Try and reach your toe. If you can reach your toe, that's great. And we just Dad want to hold Diego, this Can I see you guys get down on the ground so you can do this stretch? Um, Yep, there I'm you go. Doing That's it in my crown for this one. I'm doing it in my chair. Get down on the floor so you can really stretch it. See, look at look how he's doing it down there. You can do it. Let's get a yeah. good stretch. There we go. So we want to try All and right. hold it for, for 30 seconds or so. And whilst we're doing this, just try and relax the other leg by its side. If you feel a bit of a stretch in your hip flex and groin, that's normal. Um, it's a good hip opener as well as we do this. It just changes up slightly from what we normally do, which is like a two-footed hamstring stretch. And like I said, if you can't reach your toe, just try and reach it as close as you can. Good job, everybody. Keep your yeah. leg nice and straight. Nice job. Yeah. Woo, that's a good stretch. I can feel it. Yeah, so once we've done that leg, we're going to now move to the other leg. Exactly the same thing. Whichever leg was straight, now bend towards you and make the other bent leg straight now. So again, the same thing, try and reach your toe. If you can, that's great. If you can't, it doesn't matter. Wherever you feel that kind of stretch and burn motion is where we want to be. So now we're doing this other leg. So for me, I start with my right, now I'm on my left. Good job, Julian. Nice, Olivia. Jack, can you reach it? Nice job, buddy. 
Rex, good job. Christine and Charlotte, I can't see you, which means you must be doing a good job of reaching your toes. Oh, you want me to, do you see me like this? Yeah, there you go, girl. But that's okay, okay because that just means you're down on the ground reaching for your toes, so that's good. Yeah, I All got right. it. So that was okay. our house refresh form up. Okay. The next one I think we did last time as well, which was like a bottom of a squat hip opener. I do this pretty much every session. I think it's a really useful one for mobility, especially in our hips, which can get quite tight through our day-to-day -day activities. Um, so what we want to do here is we want to start from being stood up, kind of bend down, put our hands on the inside of our knees and just kind of sit in the bottom of a squat. Some people can't do this as comfortably as others. So whatever the limit is, you can even rest your hands on your knees if you need to. For me, I'm quite comfortable all the way at the bottom. Um, and we just want to sit here. I normally end up putting my elbows on the inside of my, my knees just to help open up my, my hips. Um, alternatively, if you're really struggling with the depth, you can always hold on to something to give you that bit of support. Olivia, see if you can put your hands inside your legs. Yeah. Yes. So we it's kind of like the frog, the frog thing that we do. Good racks. Nice. Julian, nice job. I got it. Got it. There we go. Nice. And what I normally do when I'm down here, I can just bounce and just push my weight over each leg just to try and open up everything. You can kind of feel it stretch out the front of your leg into your into your ankles, up your shin, and most importantly, your hips. Just always trying to keep that chest up as well. So I'm going to stay here for another few seconds. And then I stand up to finish. Woo! That's one I pretty much do every single day, but a lot of my movements, a lot of lower body stuff as well. Um, next one is something I've been integrating a lot lately. We did this last time, I think, as well in November, which was a forearm stretch. I think we did it at the end. We're going to do it to start off. With this, pretty simple. We just want to take our hands, put them in front of ourselves, and point our sort of fingers towards us, and then just kind of sit in that. You, when you do this, you want to go real slow just to make sure you can feel what's going on. If you can't rotate your hands all the way in towards your knees, it's fine to put them sideways like this. So instead of it going like that, you can go sideways. Um, again, do this one quite slowly, just so you don't put too much weight on your on your forearms. But yeah, rotating inwards and then just kind of sit. This is a really good one to open up your, relax your, your forearms. Mine tighten up and all the texting and use of my mobile phone every day. This is a really good one because we're all on our phones and our tablets and our computers all day long. So it's nice to stretch that out. Look down at your fingers. Are they pointing at you or are they pointing to the side? Pick one or the other. Just don't have them pointing forward because then we won't get that good stretch. Nice, everybody. Really nice. Good. And Diego, if you're not going down on the floor, you can also pull your fingers back if you want to just do There you go. If you're not going down on the floor. Nice. Exactly. Yeah, All right. So, check out your arms. And yeah, last one is a single leg quad stretch. Again, we've done this one before. It's going to be tried to, we're trying to do it stood up. Um, needs a bit of balance. Hold on to the wall. If you struggle with it a bit, which I can admittedly say sometimes I do too. Um, yeah, so what we're going to do is just take one leg. For me, the right one's first. It's easier. Take it behind ourselves and hold on to the right arm. And then just pull, it, pull that leg behind you, kind of your heel to your backside. And then just That's good, Andy. Straight. Yep, that's good. We're all used to this one from running. This is when we do a lot before we run. Yep, you guys got it. Christine, can yeah. you grab your leg behind you? Feel a nice stretch it. right here in our legs. Got it. Got it. If you need to grab something, it's super easy just to grab onto a chair or a bench or the wall just to help you balance. It's twice around. So that was the first one. We're going to move on to the next leg. And Put your leg. Damn it. Yeah, it's not okay. the easy, but sometimes the balance thing is a difficult. It took me a while to get the balance right, to be honest. It's difficult. But often I was falling over. Um, but yeah, over time, if you use a wall, grab a chair, grab, even do it off the side of your bed. Um, a lot of things are made easier by holding on to something. But yeah, it took, me, it took me a while to build up the balance to stand up. And even when I stand up, I straight, I sometimes topple over anyway. But yeah, yeah it, so basically it's okay. that's... It's fine, okay. Okay, we'll move on to the next one. Good job, everyone. Yeah. Exactly. 
Um, yeah, so today we're going to do a full body workout like we normally do, um, starting with lower body, moving to upper body and then to core, all of which are really important for me as a racing driver because it isn't just your upper body and it isn't just the endurance aspect that become tough. You kind of need good conditioning and good strength in, in all the different parts of your body. Um, so to start off with our lower body stuff, we've done loads of squats before. So today we're going to do a pulse squat, which essentially is a squat where we stop at different points. So we're going to start off like a normal squat. If a normal stop would be down and up, what we're going to do instead is we're going to go down, come up a little bit to halfway, pause, go back down, and then stand up. So from the side, it's going to be down to the bottom, up slightly, go back down, and then yeah. up. So we're kind of pulsing in that movement. So we're going to our full range of depth, coming up a little bit, going back to that full range, and then standing back up. So it's like down, middle, down, up. Okay, exactly. does that make sense, everybody? And if you get lost, just watch what Phil's doing. Okay, so we're gonna do eight of these. Um, I'll count us through them. We want our feet to be kind of shoulder width apart. I'll stand on the side so you can see. Hold on, before, let me see everybody's standing. There we go, there we go. Okay, Phil, we're ready. All right, we're gonna do eight of these. So down fully, up midway, back down, and then up, stand up. So that's one. So we'll go two. Middle, and you can have down. your hands in front of you together just to give you a bit of support or down by your side, whatever's comfortable. And three. Good, everybody. Down, middle, down, up. That's four. Down, mid, down, up. That's five. Nice. Okay, you have to. Yes. Down, Good. middle, down, up. I got Seven, it. Seven, down, up, back down, stand up. Seven. Nice. And last one. Eight. And we want it to kind of be a fluid movement. So the, the longer we make it, the more difficult it is. So the quicker you make that pulse, the easier it's going to be. We don't want to go too fast because we want to feel that our quads and glutes working, but at the same time, um, we want to not make it too hard for ourselves by going quite quickly. So we're just going to move on to our second leg exercise, and then we're going to do it all back over again. Um, our second thing will be a glute bridge pulse very similar to what we did there, but now with our glute bridge. So I'm gonna be on the ground again. I lie down flat for this. I have my feet bent nearly 90 degrees and we're gonna lift up, but instead of going all the way up, we're gonna pulse. So we're gonna go up, back down, up, and then fully back. Okay, does that make sense everybody? So maybe take it, Phil, can you do that one more time? And yeah. everybody, before you lie down, look at what Phil's doing so you can see, and then we'll lie down and do it together. So take a look at, at so, Phil. Okay, go ahead, Phil. Very similar to the squat. We're going to go from the bottom up to the top, back to mid, back to the top, and then back down again. So if we're lying down, look at this. We're going to go fully up, back down to middle, back up fully, and then back down. So it's just like we did our thing. Up, middle, up, down. Okay? Yeah, exactly. Go, go, go. Let's all lie on our backs. Bend your feet, bend your knees. Put your feet on the ground. There we go, there we go. Okay, ready? We're ready, so how many are we doing? We're gonna do eight. Perfect. Okay. So, we're gonna go up, up. Middle, back up, and back down. That's okay. one. So two, and up. down. Down. Three, up. Up, up middle, up. up, down. Good down. job, everybody. Four. Five. Oh. Well, so, yeah. You know, you're doing this. You're doing this you're nice, doing everybody. Oh, so each you can see. Seven. Up. And down. And eight. Up and down. Oh, he's still doing more. Oh, there you go. Sit up. I think I did up. Middle, 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 up. <laughs> That's okay. As long as we're doing them, guys. Yeah, exactly. Nice. It's yeah. difficult to get the rhythm, but once we do it a few times, we'll get into the rhythm of things. So now we're going to do that whole thing again, starting with our pulse squats, which is what we did at the start, which was, if you can remember, like this. And then we're going to move into the glute bridges. So, okay, so we're going to go down, middle, up, down. Yeah, exactly. So what, right. what, we're trying to, what we're trying to achieve here is just to try and pulse in that middle part. So not necessarily pause, but just move through those different ranges. Okay. Okay, so, so let's stand again. So everybody stand. Okay, Diego, 
Jack, we ready? Good. This one's standing, so we can all do this. Yeah, again. Your so leg. Feet shoulder width apart underneath us. And I, I choose to put my hands together in front of me like this. So we're going to go down, up to the middle, down again, and stand up. So one. One, two, up. Middle, down, two, up. One, down, middle, down, middle, up. Okay. Hips. So three, up, squat, four. Don't bend over, down. Hey, down, five, middle, two, down, three. up. One, Six. Three. Keep saying that in your head too, if that helps. Yeah. Two, Seven. Eight. One, That's one. Eight. One, two, up. Woo! I'm just doing good too. Wow, I can feel that already in my legs. How's everybody else's legs feeling? Good? Good. Yeah. Making us stronger for running. Yeah. yeah. Always. And now we're going to go back into our glute bridges, which is what we did just before that. So again, just run through this quickly. We're going to lie down. Tilt this down a bit. Watch him first before you lie down. Lie down. I rest my hands on my chest. We're going to lift up fully. We're going to come down halfway, back up, and then fully down. Remember? So okay. up, up, middle, down. up, down. So that's what we're going to say in our head. Just like okay, this. everybody on your back. You ready? Come on, count with them. Okay. All right, Phil, we're ready. All right, eight of these again. So we're going to lie down and go up, down to the middle, back up, and relax to the bottom. Up, that's one. Down, Two, down. middle, Two, top. Great. And down. Oh, top, okay. middle, top, and down. Four. Top, middle, top, down. Five. Up, middle, up, and down. To six. Up, middle, up, and down. Seven. Up, middle, up, and down. And our last one. Eight. Up, middle, up, and down. Good job, everybody. My hand was really good bridges there. That was awesome. On the floor, it makes my hand I, and my I, wrist hurt. Hey, really did. Yeah. yeah, you all did really well. Sometimes our wrist hurts from my, when I'm working out. Uh, I do Sometimes that hurts. Well, you can kind of roll them out like that. Why don't we take, Bill, that we're doing two workouts for our legs, right? We're moving on from this. We're moving on. So I've got my water now. I'll probably take a sip. Yep, let's do it. Let's all take a little water break. And then I can ask for questions. I'm not Until that. we're done with our workout. Then you'll ask okay, then I will. I will make sure we get to our questions. Okay, everybody take a sip or two. Yeah. Okay, we're ready, Phil. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, so lower body done. Again, lower body is really important because a lot of the things that we do in a day-to-day -day life are really functional to have lower body strength, getting up from chairs, getting out of bed, even small things. Um, a lot of our power comes from our legs. So moving on to upper body, um, we're going to do push-ups. We love push-ups push-ups we've done it many different times many different ways we're just going to do traditional push-ups um again we're, we're working for about eight to ten here um just normal push-ups all the way down all the way back up cues we're really looking at keeping our, our hands slightly wider than our shoulder width apart trying to lock out at the top go down to as close as we can to the floor which is still comfortable and then back up and push-ups aren't yeah. something that everyone has the strength to do you know when i started i could barely do a push-up uh, when i was a kid so I used to do push-ups on knees and make, make loads of different variations to make it easier for myself. So make sure that you scale appropriately to whatever um, level of strength you have in your body, um, just so you can get through the whole set of eight to 10. So Absolutely. I'll just show you what that looks like. Again, so they all know how much I love push-ups. Push-ups are so important because we're starting in our plank, which we know is so important for us. And then we're going down. So watch Phil do one regular. Here's a regular one, but notice he's going to get in his plank first and then he's going to do his push-up. Okay. Just show Phil, just show us one push up first. Watch how Phil does this. Notice his elbows stay in. Now, Phil, can you show us if we're going to go on our knees what it would look like? Yeah, exactly. So, if, if that might be a bit too difficult, what I'm going to do is have my knees behind me. I would recommend just crossing the legs at the back, it makes it a lot easier. And then doing the same thing, but my knees going down and back up. Okay. What I'd like to see everybody do, though, is try at least one push up from plank and then if it gets too hard you can go down on your knees for sure because we want us all to get through yeah. 10 of them yeah. Yeah. whether you're on your knees or not but let's all start in plank those are okay. tough let me see everybody get into plank first and we're going to watch that's hard to do what charlotte those are tough to do 
If I know it, but we're going to challenge ourselves. Okay, go ahead and get in plank, everybody. Woo, Rex, Julian, Melissa, look at these planks. Okay, oh, okay. count us, Bill. We're going to try 10, so. Four. One. Yeah. One. Two. Three. three you have to go. You need to go to your knees. Go ahead. I'm, go I'm going to get out of here. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And 10. Woo! Nice job. I saw some really solid push ups, guys. That was amazing. Yeah, exactly. And for the second, um, for the second movement, we're going to do something very similar to a plank. We're going to do an up down plank, which is kind of incorporating what a plank is and a push up, but individually on each arm. So for this, we're going to be in that bottom plank position that you guys have done with Angie before which looks like this on our elbows. With our feet straight, again, if it's too difficult, drop down to your knees. And what we're gonna do is push up with both arms and then lower ourselves back onto our elbows and push back up and then lower ourselves back onto our elbows. We don't wanna be dropping down with both elbows. We wanna be kind of climbing with one arm first and then one arm back down. Okay, and so look at where Phil's legs were. We're not in cat cow. We want to push our legs back so that we're still where our back is still straight. Yeah, exactly. So put your legs back behind you and then they're going to go down. Yeah, right? exactly. The best way to get into this position would be on your knees and then just walk yourself forward out until you can get onto your elbows. And we want to just in that comfortable plank position do what are called up downs. Um, so yeah, we're going to do eight, which is in total, so 16 per arm. Um, I'll count us through it. So I'll count one, one, two, two, et cetera. Okay. Okay, let me see everybody go down. Good. Push your legs behind you. Yep, so you're, you're kind of in a plank, but you're down. Okay, we're getting there. It's looking good. And again, if it's too difficult, you can drop onto your knees and cross your <laughs> legs behind you. So we start okay, from our right. plank position. We're going to count up to eight. So up one, one, down, and then again, two. Three, okay, go from your elbows to your hands, and then back four, down. Five, six, seven, and eight. Nice job, guys. Yeah, it's a really good exercise working on our tricep strength, our core, and a small bit of pushing through our pec and shoulder. Um, and we can do that whole thing again, starting with the push ups and then into our plank up downs. You find you're using the same muscle group here for both exercises. So as you get into your up downs, you should start to feel it burn at least through your triceps. That's normal. Okay, let's do it. We can do it. 10 more push ups. If you need to go to your knees, go to your knees. But I want you to get all the way through, okay? So push yeah. through it. I know all our arms are sore, but we can do it. Okay, let me see everybody start in plank. Yep, pick those knees off the ground. Good, nice nice and flat. Remember, we don't want our, our butt all the way up in the air like this. And we don't wanna be sinking down like this. We want a nice flat back. Oh yeah, that looks fantastic. All right, Phil, we're ready. All right, let's go. One, two. Three, Try and keep your back four, flat as you bring yourself down. Five, Use those arms. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Woo! Woo! I don't know about you guys, but my arms are sore, but we can do it. We've got one more. Keep going, guys. Keep those arms going. Yeah, All exactly. Right, so all right, last one, up down planks. We did this just now. Again, start in your bottom plank position. If it's too difficult, go on your knees. We just want to walk ourselves out onto our elbows, keeping our back nice and straight and flat, not having a high bum and not also rolling through our lower back. So just strong position. Move up onto our legs if, we, if we're strong enough and then count up. One, back down on our elbows. Two, three, four, five, six, 
five, six. Seven, go, my, my and, dog. You're cute, right, Angie? <laughs> Woo! Good Keep job, going, everybody. Angie. I got distracted by the puppy running around. I didn't hear what number we're at, and I just kept going, and then I looked, and all of you were done. I think I got a few extra in there. So okay, let's follow Bill and let's drink some water. Yep. Give those arms a little shake. Woo! We really work them out. Shake them out. Yep. Nice. Okay. Wow, guys, we are crushing it. What are we doing now? Last bit is just some core before we warm down. So core is probably the most important strength component of our body. It wraps all around our trunk and gives us support. I think a lot of lower back pain, any pain in your back can kind of be attributed to okay, having weak support in some um, And it's really important for many, many different sports, let alone racing. Um, so yeah, we're gonna do something we haven't tried before. We're gonna do leg lifts. And we're gonna do what's called a superset, which is one movement directly into the next movement. So before when we've done squats and push-ups, had a small break and then gone into our um, glute bridges and up downs. We're now going to do one movement straight into the next. And this is going to be quite easy because we're going to remain on the floor for both movements. So I'll, I'll explain it through to you. We're going to start with a leg lift. So again, many different ways to scale this. We can either do it with two legs, we can do it with two legs straight, we can do it with bent knees, or we can do it with a single leg. So if we lie down completely on our backs, what we're going to do, have our legs straight in front of us and we lift them up to a 90 degree angle and then drop them back down. To make okay, wait, hold on guys. Why don't you just, um, Bill's just gonna show us right now. So yeah. everybody don't worry about doing it. Just watch him so you can see what he's doing and then he'll start us all together. Okay, Bill, yeah. show us that again because some, okay. some of us have started. So the first movement is just lying completely down on the floor, legs straight and we're gonna lift the legs above to 90 degrees and then back down. We can make this easier by doing it with bent knees like that or even easier by going a uh, single leg and back down. We're gonna do- I noticed so when Phil did that, he did not pick his back up off the ground. Yes. Yeah. Right? Keep your back on the ground. And a way of achieving our back to be level on the ground, quite often we can put our hands underneath our bums um, just to make sure that we make sure our lower back stays in contact. As you get tired, you will find quite often our lower back starts to lift and we create a little bit of a gap underneath. So to stop that from happening, I'll take my hands, put it under my bum, and then that basically gives a little bit of ramp and keeps my lower back in contact. And that's another way of making this slightly more bearable. Um, so after we've done eight of those, uh, sorry, five of those, um, you can either do it both legs together, both legs bent or a single leg, depending on how you're feeling it's going. We're gonna stay in that position after completing our fifth rep of that. And we're gonna drop our legs down to 45 degree angle or a bit less. And we're gonna do what's called heel taps. We're gonna take our hands straight, I'm going to try and tap our heels whilst twisting slightly through our upper body. So like this. Looking forward on, we're going to do tap. One, two, three, four, five. We also call those the penguin walk, guys. Remember, like a penguin, you're waddling, you're going one side to the other side, okay? Yeah. We've done these before, so we know those. And exactly. those are just going right from the one into the other? Yeah, right from the one into the other. Um, so both are going to be on the floor. So what you want to do for both of these is lie down flat on the floor. And I'll cue us through all of these. Um, five leg lifts, either with legs together, like I said, legs bent, or with a single leg, whichever you feel comfortable with. From that into 10 heel taps. Um, with the heel taps, crunching through our core, looking straight, kind of looking between your legs um, and just tapping with each side. Um, the, the rotation should just be what's comfortable and natural. Um, yeah, so let's get started. Okay, we so everybody get on your back. Let me see everybody lying flat on your back. And have your feet on the ground, your knees bent. Yeah. Good. Okay, Julian, Charlotte, let me see you get on your back. Yep, all the way down, flat on the floor. Can't do it in your chair, Charlotte and Diego, so let's see on the ground. Oh. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we're ready. All right, so we're lying completely on our backs and we're gonna do leg lifts. So five of these, again, up to 90 degrees and then back down, so one. Two, we can put our hands underneath our bums as well. Three, four, and five. 
And then from there, we're going to just drop our legs up behind us, exactly like that, keeping our hands on the ground, and we're going to try and touch on our heels. So we're going to go one. Try to touch two. to the right. Try to touch to the left. Exactly. One at a time. Three. Four. See if you can touch your toes. Five, See how far you can go. Six. Nice, Rex. Seven. Eight. Nine. And ten. I'm going to do that whole thing one more time after a little break. How'd that feel, everybody? Does that make sense? Yeah? Awesome. I see the thumbs up. That's good. Nice. Okay. Take a couple breaths. We're going to do it all over again. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And again, many different ways to scale this. Bring your knees closer, bending your knees using a single leg. Um, but what's important is we want to try and do this, what's called a superset which is moving from one um, exercise straight into the other with very little rest. Um, that way we can kind of compound the work and make it a bit difficult. Um, okay, so ready to do that again? Back on your backs, everybody. Back on your back. Okay, we're gonna do five leg lift again. So our hand is three, one. Okay, lift those legs. Keep your two, back down. Three, four, and five. And then dropping our knees, bending our knees, dropping them behind us. Bend and those knees. Good. Individually our right and then left or left and right heels for 10. So one, two. I don't like a penguin. This is your penguin six, walk. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And 10. Woo! Oh man, I can feel that. Everybody take a sip of your water. Wow, those are really good. I like that super set, Phil. Yeah, very different. And everybody um, else think of that. You like that super set, guys? Yeah. Yeah. It makes you feel super strong. <laughs> exactly. That's why they invented them. <laughs> um, all right. So for the cool down, we're going to kind of work through a lot of the different muscle groups that we worked just now. Um, with the first, sorry, with the upper body stuff that we did, a lot of that was pushing. So using muscle groups, triceps, chest, through your shoulder, through your, your um, deltoids. But more importantly, most of the hinging comes from your elbow and your tricep gets most of the load of, of that work. So from this, we're going to do what's called a manual um, tricep stretch. I just sit on the ground and what I'm going to do is take one arm bend it behind me and then grab my other arm and just hold that elbow and just pull that kind of towards my hand until I feel it stretch all the way down the back of my arm, which is what's called a tricep. So you want to do that and just kind of hold this for 30 seconds. What you'll find it does is sometimes push your head a bit forward, but that's natural. Just kind of sit in that looking down for about 30 seconds. Whilst we stretch guys, it's really important just to think about our breathing. So taking deep breaths, kind of allows you to gain range of motion and relax the muscle. What day can I see you do that exercise? You got this. And relax that arm. And we're going to do the same thing with our other arm. So taking one arm up above us, bending it behind our head, taking the other hand, putting it on top of our elbow and kind of pulling it towards and back down. And we want to sit here for 30 seconds. Hey, Iron Fist, can I see you do this in your chair? You don't even have to get up, bud. There you go. Nice job, everybody. And relax. Cool. So that's a really good stretch to try and stretch a tricep. Yeah, difficult. I, I do get try it. Really relax. Um, yeah. The next one is something we did last time. I think we quite liked it. Hip flex stretch. So for this, we're going to be on our knees, starting with our knees. If everyone gets on their knees, like so. And what we're going to do is take one leg and put it in front of us like that, splitting our posture. So it's going to look like this. And from there, we're just going to put our weight on that knee in front and just kind of really lean forward forward, keeping our upper body straight, but pushing that knee forward 
and really feeling it in that opposite leg. So like this, 90 degrees and just pushing forward. I'm gonna just chill in that spot. What we wanna do here is really feel it through kind of your groin and hip flex on the opposite leg. And our hips often get very tight when we're running. So it's really important that we're stretching our hips out. Nice, everybody. Uh, and we're gonna change sides now. So again, stepping back, both on our knees, putting the other leg forward. And then once we're at 90 degrees, just kind of driving that knee forward and really feeling it stretch down our hip flex. Focus on our breathing. Exactly, yeah. You said Whenever that it actually. starts to really hurt, just take some deep breaths and you find it eases as your body relaxes. <laughs> Arlie, you're a goof. That was me laughing. Okay. Thank I you. I know you're a goof. <laughs> yeah, guys, keep stretching it out. Yeah, and relax. Okay, for the last stretch, we're going to do what's called a pigeon glute stretch. So this one looks kind of funny. But once you sit in it, it's quite comfortable. So what we're going to do here is from our knees, we're going to take one leg, put it in front of us and across. And what we want to do is try and sit down on top of it, like so, bending it at 45. If 45 is too difficult, you can have it a bit off. I want to show you what this one looks like because it's, it's a bit difficult to get into. So what we're going to do is take one leg, put it in front of us, and then take our hands in front of that and just sit down in this stretch. So it's like our figure four, but we're doing it on the ground. Exactly. And we can go from our elbows like that. So basically what you wanna, the cues you wanna be thinking about is your knee in front of you, in between your arms um, and your foot across the other side of your body like this. To make it more difficult, you can lift your foot up like that. And what we wanna feel is working is our glute of that same leg that's in front of us. So our right glute to me. Let's sit here. For all my yogis who've come to our yoga class in the past, this is also yeah, our was pigeon. There in April. Except we're not going all the way down, but this is how we start our pigeon. Remember I was there in April and the summer of 2020? Yeah. But I don't. And I... Anyway. And we're going to switch sides. Again, same thing for this side. Yeah. We're going to be taking that leg, putting it in front of us, and kind of sitting down into that position. So, like so. Again, we use the glutes quite a lot today. Um, somewhat used in the squat, but especially in the glute bridge, gets quite tight through day-to-day -day stuff as well. So it's a good stretch you can do at home. And it's a nice one because you can kind of sit in this without needing any effort. You're kind of relaxing into it. and relax so yeah that is pretty much it wow how do we all feel right now i feel good i have a question yeah honey. right I have what a question, an awesome honey. full body workout and we're super stretched before we do anything else let's all take a little more water i have a question i i see you charlotte we'll get there so let's drink our water first i understand i've been very patient you've been so patient charlotte i very That's much so that's so hard, the pigeon. The pigeon is yeah, very absolutely. hard, right? Because our hips often get super tight. My legs get, my legs runners, get dirty. They get yeah. tight. But like everything else that Phil was telling us, we have to just keep trying and working at it. Because remember how Phil said he couldn't do push-ups when he was a kid? And then he kept practicing, and now he can do them? Same yeah, with I'm... all these stretches too, right? Sometimes these stretches are hard. It just means that our body's tight. And so if we keep doing them, they're going to get easier and we're going to be more flexible. And that's going to also help us to be. I tried doing push-ups on my knees, but then I couldn't really. So then I did wall push-ups the second time because wall push-ups are sometimes easier. Good yeah, that works 
too. That's awesome. Before we get to our questions, don't worry, Charlotte, you are going to be my first one to do the question. Can we just say thank you to Phil for that awesome workout? Can everybody thank, thank you? Thank you, Phil. Thank you, oh Phil. Gosh. That was such a great workout, guys, and such a good mm -hmm. full body workout, which is awesome. And it's going to make us better runners all around. And if you want to watch it again, Karen puts it up online so you can rewatch this. And then like Olivia said, she had a hard time with, with her, the hip opener, the pigeon, you can go back and you can do all these. If you had a hard time with pushups, you can go back and do them <laughs> until you're getting really good at all this stuff. And so that's super, super awesome. So you know what you know, so, so much, but you know I, what I, I can do can... some questions. So I'm going to, I'm going to go through our questions. If you have a question, right? Charlotte's going to be our first person. And then after Charlotte's done, if you have a question, raise your hand. But while Charlotte's asking her question and while Phil is answering, probably wait for what them. do you think the rest of us should be doing? Be quiet. Listening. listening. Very good. And be so quiet. Let's be really good listeners as we ask questions and as we listen to the answer. Okay. Okay, Charlotte, you have been so super patient. I know Go ahead. my legs are dirty. I, I just wipe it off. They get dirty. So hi, Phil. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you, Charlotte? Good. Um, my first one is. How many years have you been racing and what is your favorite sports thing to stay hydrated or do you drink just water? Um, so Good, question. Good questions. Part, yeah, don't worry. I, to answer the first part, I've been racing um, for probably uh, 10 years now, a bit a bit less. Um, I started racing at what's considered a late age in, in motorsport, which was 13, 14, because most kids nowadays start much younger in go-karts, especially at ages of six, eight, 10, um, are your most frequent ages. So to come into go-karting at 13, 14 was considered quite late, but then I went into cars at the normal age, um, of about 16, um, and then progressed since there. So I've probably spent my last six years in cars. Um, and in my current category of LMP2, I've spent the last three and a half, nearly four years. Um, and to answer the second part of the question, hydration drinks, um, I used to just drink water. Um, I pretty much still water is my go-to drink. Um, there's a lot of sugars in many different other juices out there. Um, although I really love orange juice, um, uh, I know the sugars and stuff. So off, water is often my go-to. Um, otherwise, I have some some powders and electrolytes. Sometimes, sometimes I put in that to give it some flavor. But um, yeah, I'm a real stickler for just the plain water taste, to be honest. I knew I liked Phil for a reason. Yeah. Me too. You guys know I'm always like pushing cool water, 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 there. water. It's the most yeah. important thing we can drink is water, especially when we're racing and when we're training. Really good question, Charlotte. Does anybody Thank else you, have Angie. a question? I'm glad you, you liked them. If anybody else has one. Yeah, I have one. Okay, go ahead, Diego. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to be like Charlotte in here and ask, uh, how's your day going so far, man? Yeah, good. Thank you. How's yours, Diego? Yeah been stressful but i'm finding a way to get through it That's anyway good. uh Hi. anyway i did have a, i did have a question uh that i'd like to ask you what exactly uh so this has actually been kind of a question for all of us but uh i mainly wanted to ask how is it like how do you deal with uh with like after you lose a race like how do you uh de how do you deal with that like you see what I'm trying to ask you? Like, but Diego, yeah. that's a great question, Diego. That's How a do you good deal question. With yeah, it's a very good question. Um, you know what? To be honest, there's a huge amount of, of disappointment and reaction after a race comes from the amount of work that we've put into the race. So if we're very, very underprepared and we have a bad race, we kind of know it's because we're underprepared. We haven't put that much work into it. What really hurts sometimes is when you put a lot of effort into something, you've donated a lot of time to it, you spend a lot of energy to going towards a certain goal, and then and it doesn't work out because then you feel like, well, I've just spent all this time working towards it and it didn't work out. Um, and because I'm in a competitive sport, there's a lot of anal analytics that are involved um, in finding out why things haven't gone so bad. So from the car side, engineers will spend literal weeks um, analyzing the data from the races, figuring out what happened. If it was a driver error, um, it's kind of personal reflection for me personally. Um, I normally reflect on every race, even good or bad, to try and figure out where I could have gotten some more, some more speed out and, um, and work out where I can improve on the next race. Um, but when the bad races happen, what always fuels me is I get, I often have a second chance. I often have a race further down the line in a few weeks, um, that I can then get the opportunity to, uh, kind of, um, try and win again. 
Um, but yeah, the biggest thing for me is, is when a lot of preparation, a lot of hard work and a lot of time has gone into something and then it doesn't work out. That's, that's when it's tough. But luckily, like yeah. I said, always a chance to redeem yourself. Um, yeah, that's and always good. Self-analyzing uh, things always helps. Honestly, like, because I don't know about some of y'all, but I feel like uh, I, I get very upset. Like, like it, it, there used to be like some times where I actually uh, was just so angry and agitated and uh, I uh, felt so like irritated that I lost. I mean, yeah. has that ever happened to you, Phil? Like, yeah, quite often, quite often it happens. Um, but the important thing is quite often in nearly every scenario, most scenarios, you get a second chance. Um, oh, you, you might not get a second chance in that exact same reality, whether it's you know your your final football match of the season or whether you're you know whatever sport you may be doing or even in a day to day activity. Um, but there will always be other opportunities and other activities or in similar things in coming years that you'll get the opportunity to kind of happen have again. And if you work oh. with enough hours towards something, eventually you're going to be able to succeed in it. So that's that, good. That's idea is, is good man you inspired me you inspire me man and i love you i love you so much man like you have no idea <laughs> that's nice to hear but the other thing is you know for me um, as an athlete that there's a lot of losing that happens um is. it's very rare to be to be you know your, your tom brady's or your you know your top level athletes that seem to always win um and even those people they've done a lot of losing in their career to get to that point of success um, yeah. And what's important to remember is through all those losses, if you continue to work on the weaknesses and you continue to improve yourself, then you'll eventually get the reward, which will be success in the end. Um, oh, it, that's so true. Yeah. And, and what, what we don't often see is we don't often see how people got to their success. We don't often see the hours at home, in the gym, working hard, whether it's having an A on an exam. We don't often hear about, you know, the 10 hours of studying for the exam that happened across multiple weeks. We just hear about, oh, look, I got an A on my test. Um, and that's what's important to remember is, is you don't often get people that just luckily and they, they ate the test. Normally, there's been a lot of hard work that's gone in behind the scenes. And that's oh, very yeah. related to sports. I mean, like, that's do you know anyone who hasn't actually uh, put in hard work? Um, I see it quite often, actually. There's a lot of people that don't put in as much work, but quite often they don't normally um, fight me yeah, for a race wins. They're normally at the back. Um, they don't so, usually get that far because like they don't actually put in the hard work or the success exactly and that's kind of frustrating yeah do you find it frustrating or is that uh, not really um to be honest the, the less people working as hard as me the better because the more likely i'm gonna win <laughs> um <laughs> yeah. that's, that's actually true that's true yeah that's true. Um, I'll, I'll give you that i'm not going to encourage people to work I will not work hard, but I'm um, I'm definitely going to use it as motivation for myself. Yeah, because you got you have to you have to man. You and Phil, really, you know really that's really to. good advice that Phil is giving us that we can use in everything in our life, right? Like we just got to work hard. We got to do the best we can. We cannot win at everything. It's just not possible. Nobody wins at everything. But if we're trying the best that we can and we're doing our best, then at the end of the day, that that's what matters most. And we can always improve. Like Phil says, after a race, he goes back and think, how can I do it better? And we can do the same thing. How can I improve and do my best for the next one? But Andrew, like no one's perfect also. Although sometimes, uh, no. sometimes when I'm in school and I feel like I do bad, on a test, I get very emotional or very yeah. upset, but then I, like, talk to a counselor, and also my yeah. friends tell me no one's perfect, and, like, it's okay to make a mistake. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's really, really important thing that you said. There's not a single person in this world that is perfect. We cannot do everything perfect. We just try the best we can, and Achilles' motto have fun doing it, right? That's what matters yeah. most. Okay, we have to get going because Karen, um, we got to close this up. And Phil's yeah, got a busy day, day, and we've been on, we've taken so much time. We're so end, thankful Karen. for him. So I want us all to put our hands in. So after party at the end, Karen. And let's say go Achilles kids. Phil, we're going to be wishing you lots of luck mm -hmm. and keep us posted on how your races are. And everybody say thank you, Phil, one more time. Thanks, Thank Phil. You, Phil. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot. Okay, ready? Go Achilles kids on three. One, two, three, go! Go, go Achilles! Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Phil. That was amazing.
Thanks Bye. a lot, guys. Thank you so much. See you guys. Thank you. Thanks a lot, guys. Are we having an after party?